Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. I do, I am grateful for that. Um, let me post a photograph of a view of Nairobi's central business district taken from Uhuru Park. Uh, this is one of the public parks in Nairobi and it's increasingly becoming a, a place of contestation between the government and the opposition. And then this photograph, pink flamingos on Lake Nakuru, also known as the Blue Lake in Kenya. It's very pretty indeed. I was listening to some Adam Curtis. I'll give you the link in tomorrow's uh, podcast. Well, actually, tomorrow's a holiday, the day after. Um, and he was touching on France Fanon. When we revolt, it's not for a particular culture. We revolt simply because, for many reasons, we can no longer breathe. Each generation must discover its mission, fulfill it or betray it in relative opacity. That's powerful as well, and then this is probably my favorite. Mastery, mastery of language affords remarkable power, he said. Political Reflections, North Korea launched a failed missile test, the South is saying. And the South Korea's president is actually in Nairobi as we speak. Former Chad President Hissane Habre is found guilty of crimes against humanity, torture and sexual abuse. You must be wondering what has happened because once upon a time he was fated at the White House during the time of Ronald Reagan. He was sentenced by the Special African Chamber created in 2013 by Senegal and the African Union to life in prison. Let me also post a photograph of the Palais de Justice Dakar, um, which is where he was tried. Um, so I think, you know, the question is, is this just an isolated instance or is this uh, a new example of how justice can be delivered in Africa? In the last few days, somebody has been painting the initial letter of the Arabic word for resistance, Mukawama, on walls in Mosul. Uh, hatred there may be against ISIS in Mosul, but there is not much people can do about it as they are unarmed and ISIS responds ferociously to any sign of dissent. Last August, it posted on the wall of the main morgue a list of 2,070 people whom it had executed since June 2014 when it captured the city. It's just one big giant prison. prison. Because of the insanitary conditions in the cellar, the young man got a serious kidney and stomach infection and ended up in a Mosul hospital where he was interviewed. He is still intending to become a suicide bomber when he gets well and will follow his friends to paradise. Though vastly outgunned, ISIS can go on killing people for a long time if it continues to recruit and train such fanatics. It really is an exercise in brainwashing because, you know, invariably it's, it's preying on young children or young men. They make a desert and they call it peace, is the bitter line Tacitus attributed to the British tribal leader Calgacus speaking 2,000 years ago. I like this photograph, not your average stop at the dock Memorial Day in New York City, New York. Hong Kong is the world's most competitive economy, apparently. New scientists are saying that the effect of CO2 on warming is worse than we thought. Everything is worse than we thought in this regard. Berlin, 1945, and I was just reading, uh, just finishing Bolano's 2066, and in that uh, he passes, spends a lot of time in Germany. April 2011, Sousa captures Obama at the heart of events, perhaps feeling the burden of his job. This is Pete Sousa, who's a photographer at the White House. And then I like this photograph taken in May 2016. The president waits pensively before a public speech. According to the Telegraph, uh, 
Margaret Thatcher was completely and utterly right to stay out of Europe, says former Greek finance minister, Baronakis. And I concluded by saying, more importantly, Mrs. Thatcher would never have taken the matter to a vote. Um, she had previously warned that a central currency would always become political. International markets, and this is probably what drove that humongous sell-off on the yen, Abe Shinzo tells officials he plans to delay the sales tax increase. Um, he told me he wants to delay the sales tax increase by two and a half years, said Yamaguchi, head of the junior coalition Komato party. I felt he was very determined. Uh, Bloomberg, June jitters roused fund managers to cast their hedging nets wide. Think sovereign bonds from major economies are being used as a hedge, even though yields are close to historic lows. Risk events for investors start as soon as this week, with OPEX ministers gathering in Vienna to discuss oil output levels and prices, an ECB meeting, and the U.S. payrolls report for May. There is universal agreement if we see a Brexit, you will initially see a very sharp fall in the pound. To see that. Um, concern that the outlook may weaken the US, Europe, and China, as well as mixed policy signals from central bankers around the world, have contributed to what UBS Group AG CEO Sergio Ermotti called a paralyzing volatility that scared away clients and caused industry wide trading revenue to tumble to the lowest since 2009. We got the Fed across the Atlantic before and after the British referendum. Um, while stocks have recovered their losses this year, uh, with the broad MSCI ACWI index up 0.9% in the period, gains in haven assets signal investors remain relatively cautious. Gold futures have climbed 14%, and that's after quite a steep sell-off. Um, Yen up 8% again, that's after quite a sharp sell-off as well. Developed market sovereign bonds return 7.7%. The euro is at 111.29, dollar index 95.70, Japanese yen 111.20, Swiss 0.9928 pound, 146.40, but it got above 147 earlier. Uh, the Australian dollar is at uh, 0.7234, India rupees 67.215, um, South Korean 111.9157, Rial 356.79, Egyptian pound 8.88, and the Rand 15.7866. Put up a three month chart of the dollar index, still think it's constructive, and it's going to be close the year higher than where we are now. Euro dollar. Germany snapped out of deflation, uh, inflation rate aged up 0.1%. Um, that was some data that came out yesterday, but it had a very weak retail sales number. It's, I'm in two minds about the euro. I think a lot will depend on what Draghi says, but on a yield basis, it should be softer. Gold, um, where are we now? Because that's been up and down a lot. 12, 11, 75, 12, 12 area. We've learned now that Venezuela has been a big seller um, and it's been, it's been assumed that Russia and China have been buying crude oil. Um, one feels it is at an inflection point. I'll put up a five-day chart. Um, but, you know, we've got algorithms in these markets and they can do anything uh, that they desire. Emerging markets FX poised for biggest monthly drop in three years. This is emerging market FX. Uh, this is the biggest drop since Mr. Bernanke's taken comment in May 2013. Brazil car sales fall 33% year-on-year, down 13% month-on-month. Sub-Saharan Africa, clearly the increase in debt coupled with serious budget deficits are putting a lot of pressure on African countries, as the AFDB Vice President Charles Boama um, but we don't think it's going to put us back into the pre-HIPC type of era. I hope not. We've certainly had some examples of folks who are keen to do exactly that, like uh, Maputo. 
Katumbi has been all but forced into exile as he faces charges of undermining state security. And I thought to myself, what became clear was that there was going to be a battle for the street and that Katumbi had a sort of tsunami card where potentially you could just wash away, you, know, you could build up so much momentum. So Kabila has sort of checkmated that by letting him out of the country and it's highly unlikely to let him back. With political tensions soaring over expectations that Kabila wants to expend, extend his rule, despite being barred from a third term, Katumbi has been all but forced into exile as he faces charges of undermining state security. Katumbi flew to South Africa on May 20, was admitted to hospital in Johannesburg. Moshi Katumbi left Johannesburg on Friday and landed in London on Saturday, said his lawyer. He will go back to Congo, but we still don't know when. He is a candidate for the presidency. Well, um, I'll put up a photograph of him, and I'm sure President Kabila is going to try and keep him out of the country for as long as possible. South African all share has closed in a seven month high. It's up 7.46% this year. Dollar Rand 15.7866. When I checked last, I still think it's got softening bias. Egyptian court sentenced the Muslim Brotherhood leader to life imprisonment that was expected. Egypt, EGX 30, up 6.38% so far this year. Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari has given the nation's central bank the go-ahead to introduce flexibility, the Naira exchange rate, his spokesman said on Monday. The president is opposed to devaluing the Naira, he has said so repeatedly, Buhari's spokesman said in an interview. He has given them leeway to introduce what he has called flexibility in managing the currency's value. Let's see what that means. Nigerian all share, however, is at a seven month high. It's up 0.91% this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is down 11.2% so far this year. Um, I like this tweet successful urbanization takes time, but rapid growth of African cities demands answers now. That's very true. Doors open to foreign banks in Somalia after half-century hiatus. Uh, Somalia Central Bank has held talks with KCB, Commercial Bank of Africa, uh, and then some banks from the Gulf, saying banking is one of the most profitable sectors in the country, while well, remittances uh, are very large. Mauritius police said on Monday it had stepped up security after gunshots were fired at the French embassy a hotel in the capital city. Kenya covers up military massacre. This is a report on CNN. January 15, a massive blast shattered the dawn car at El Addo military base. The suicide bomber had detonated a truck loaded with explosives, the queue for hundreds of fighters clad in camouflage gear to attack. The Al Shabaab put out a video which was absolutely frightful. Um, very good, very extraordinarily uh, 21st century editing, um, but it was just frightening in the sheer scale of it. The raid lasted the entire day, thousands upon thousands of bullets fired by some 300 Al-Shabaab militants um, in a brutal assault on Kenyan soldiers stationed in Somalia to fight the terrorist group. By the time the sun set, as many as 141 Kenyan soldiers were dead, some shot at point-blank range, that figure Make what happened at El Adair, Kenya's largest military defeat since its independence in 1963. In the months since, there's been no national day of mourning, no roll call of honor, and no explanation. The only clues to what happened are contained in a propaganda video made by Al Shabaab itself. Uh, one Western diplomat based in Mogadishu told CNN this was clearly a tactical disaster for the Kenyans. How can 200 Al-Shabaab walk across a field in broad daylight without the Kenyans noticing? Where were the KDF's machine guns, he asked. This is contrary, contrary to everything they've been taught and should be doing in a hostile environment. The truth about El Ade is being hidden from Kenyans, not from Al-Shabaab. Credit Suisse tweeted, corporate governance stocks of well-run companies reach higher valuations and are less volatile. This definitely applies to Kenya as well. Sunil Sangha tweeted, non-performing loans to total advances of listed banks in Kenya, some tall buildings and one skyscraper 
and uh, this goes back to the central banker's new normal. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank the central banker, Edward Girogi, um, Patrick Girogi, for such a great uh, Mind Speak session. Uh, he called it a homecoming. I wrote a piece over the weekend calling him the real deal, playing on, uh, there used to be a boxer called Evander Holyfield. And his, his nickname was Evander, the real deal, Holyfield. And I said, you know, central bank is the real deal. Patrick, the real deal, Jerogi. Uh, a great piece by Nick Clark, of Al Jazeera, who I saw last week here in Nairobi, about a rare success story of wildlife protection in Kenya. He's talking about lower wildlife conservancy. Um, shows how conservation and community are bucking the poaching trend that kills thousands. Few thought it would work. Even the experts had no chance. But 24 hours after the road underpass opened, they've opened up a road underpass for elephants. The bull elephant slowly stepped through and re-established safe passage on an ancient trail. Reaching high into the clouds, Mount Kenya is a waypoint on the elephant's inbuilt GPS. For centuries, herds in this part of Africa have trodden the route back and forth across the equator to Mount Marsabit in the north. Then came the agricultural fields and a road network. The old elephant paths were blocked by either cash crops of flowers and tomatoes or by lorries thundering on tarmac through the foothills. Elephants took the easy route and fed themselves along the way. Tired crops were destroyed overnight and livelihoods ruined. The situation was bad, said Mike Watson of the Level Wildlife Conservancy. So we negotiated an elephant corridor, a fenced route which passes through the agricultural land. We built the underpass under a busy freeway. And now hundreds of elephants travel up and down every year. Put up a photograph of a bull elephant that blocked our way in the forest in the Lower Conservancy. It was a monster, it was on heat. And uh, you know, we had an armed guard with us and he cocked the rifle and actually, you know, it was no joke. And it was, you could feel and smell it. It was just about five feet, ten feet away, momentarily. Um, I like this photograph that Level Wildlife tweeted. We absolutely love this amazing picture of Grevy's zebra on Lewa. I'll put up a photograph of two male rhinos that I took at the time of the Safari Marathon, Safari Con Marathon. And then I did a couple of uh, little videos. Take a look. Sirikoi Lodge. Um, uh, it's an eight minute clip about Lewa, about Siroquoia, which is a lodge inside Lewa. An interview with William Roberts, uh, who was the, is the owner of Siroquoia. An incredible story. They were parked miles outside in Lake Baringo. He ran away from home. What a tale. And now he runs Siroquoia with his wife. Um, I'll put up a photograph of Hannah in the waiting room, uh, uh, which is the little airstrip they have in Lewa. And then there's an interesting piece in the Wall Street Journal, an unspoiled corner of Kenya, not far from the Masai Mara. Um, this is Cotter's camp, but it's a, which is a very pretty camp. I actually once had a fight with the lady and I've uh, been meaning to go there for a long time. Kenya shilling 100.86. Nairobi all share at an eight week low, down 0.87% year to date. Barclays. Uh, reported Q1 numbers, which I spoke about, has been caught in the crosshairs of the Barclays PLC divestment. It's down 25.73% this year. National Bank, which whilst it's still down 28.25% this year, has rebounded 21.5% this month. The NSC 20 is down 4.45% and at a 13 week closing low. Kenya and South Korea are set to sign a pact for the 10 billion trillion Kansas City University. That's a positive step because I really thought that Kansas City was unlikely to get, get off the ground in the current, you know, more tighter financing environment. But that's a good result. Uh, markets at turnover slumped just $1.66 million yesterday. Safaricom was the most actively traded, eased 0.292%, closed at 1705. It's up 5.72% this year. It's overdue a rebound. Barclays, we discussed that. Uh, that's down 25.73% this year. Standard Chart had uh, closed the session, trading at 2.15. Um, let's see, but there's very little supply in that paper, in that equity. So if it moves, it's going to move quite dramatically. Diamond Trust was marked down 4.95%, close at 192. Uh, we spoke about National Bank EABL, which had surged 10.622% through yesterday morning in 2016, 
corrected uh, um, uh, 3.311% lower um, profit taking catalyst for the downdraft was the report of Business Daily which spoke of EABL being challenged uh, by their distributors to pay out more commission uh, per bottle. And previously Charles had said Kenyan consumers are incredibly price sensitive. So moving up by 20 shillings is a big deal. Um, and Kenjan finally, they found 2.29% to close at 670 above the rights issue price. Uh, the rights traded very thin. Uh, there are surely many international accounts who will be looking at this liquidity event as an opportunity to enter that stock. Because even after the dilution, we're speaking, we're speaking about a price earnings ratio of about four and a half. Um, if they can push through a tariff increase, that's going to make it even more attractive. Once again, thank you for stopping by.